Did you all just see Jilly in her circus tricks? Our little circus dog wants to show off some tricks with you guys today. Stick with me to the end to find out how you can also learn this little trick called Tiny Dancer. So first I want to welcome you to this week's mini training, top five. We're going to get started soon and I want to show off some tricks that we've learned here with some simple training that you can do at home and on celebrating National Train Your Dog Month. So if you're struggling to come up with ideas on how to entertain your new puppy, if your dog is getting bored with everything you already have in your house after a year, five years, whatever, and you need to refresh, come stick with us and find out some ways that you can play with your dog, give them some enrichment, give them some entertainment, and <laughs> make them happier, healthier dogs. Jilly's really excited, so please stay with me, my friends. I'm going to show you so much uh, with Jilly's help, of course. So this month is the perfect time to reconnect with why we rescued these dogs, <laughs> or really why they rescued us. Am I right? Yeah. So let's think about why we did that in the first place and remember how much joy we get from playing with our dogs and giving them enrichment and... Um, <laughs> playtime. So Jilly, as you can see, is very excited. We have this mat right here, which is where she goes to her place. Yes! So she knew to sit nicely and she got her treat. Did you notice that she was jumping all over me at first, but then she knew that if I ignored her, she went to her place. So let's get started with our top five tips. The first tip I want to share with you is we want to start off with some high value treats. High value treats are not necessarily the $10 bag that you can buy at the pet store. Although I do encourage you to get something like a jerky treat because dogs really do like these. So if you don't want to do that, you can do things like hot dogs, meatballs, and sausage. Those are my three favorite things to recommend because they are pre-cooked and easy to cut up into very small pea-sized pieces. So I really encourage you to get your uh, treats in order. You can get a handy treat pouch. You put your treats in here. I have mine in a in a um, baggie inside of my treat pouch so it doesn't get greasy. Also that way I can put a couple different types of treats in there to give variety on our walks and in training at home. So that's my first tip. My second tip for you guys is to make sure you have a variety of toys. When you first get a puppy, you have no idea what they like. And oftentimes what they end up doing is going for your shoes, your children's toys, any stuffed animal they can find, and they don't necessarily play with what you want them to play with. So let's get them a variety of toys. So that could be anything from a rope toy um, or a hard nylabone type toy or um, a stuffy that has a squeaker in it stuffies that have squeakers in them. Um, dogs like all different kinds of toys. Uh, one of my other favorite toys is these. They, can, they come with little pockets, holes, so you can stuff toys or treats into them and have your dog find them. So we can play a little game like this and put the treats in there. Look how excited she is. She's gonna go to her place and wait. She's gonna go to her place and now I'm going to let her play with that for a minute while I keep talking to you guys. The treats are in here. So she has something to do. Isn't that great? So she has a couple seconds where she's going to play with that, toss it around, see what's going on in there while we keep talking. So um, you want to have different toys around, like I said, and that's my second tip. The third tip is sometimes we just need to think like a dog. Just like... Um, we have these dogs that are doing things that we don't want them to do that doesn't necessarily mean they're doing anything wrong. They are just thinking like a dog. So if they love to jump, for example, when you come home and you have bags of groceries and you come home and they are jumping all over you, or if you have a guest come over and they jump all over your guest, what I'm gonna ask for you guys to do is ignore that behavior. So then let's first figure out why they're jumping. They're jumping for attention. So in order to get them to stop, we oftentimes throw our hands out or scream, or sometimes we even encourage the jumping. 
So what we need to realize is that even though maybe I don't mind if a dog jumps on me, my neighbor might not like it, or my elderly mother might not like it, or my like uh, the young children next door might not like it. It's scary. So we have to think like a dog and why they're jumping and then change that behavior. So we're going to ignore them. We're going to turn our bodies away. We are going to put our arms and our legs kind of closer to our body and we're going to ignore the behavior. As soon as they have all four paws on the floor, uh, then we can say, yay, good girl, you know, and we can encourage them to play. Chili, come here, come here. Well, you, you're still going after that, aren't you? That was fun. Hi. So Jilly loves to jump on people, and because she's small, she often gets away with it because people don't mind. I mind because I'm a trainer, and I want her to know that that's not how we greet people. So I work very hard with her to encourage her to not jump on us when she gets overly excited. And the ways we do that, like I said, I'm just going to repeat one more time, is that we, we ignore them, we turn our body around, we wait for four paws on the floor, and then we tell them they're doing a great job. So we can also teach them how to greet us in other ways. So we can work on that in other skills throughout our training. So that's my third step, third tip for the day. The fourth thing I wanted to share with you, since we're talking about jumping, and I just showed you a cool trick, is how we got Jilly to do this. So I have to give props to another trainer, Jackie Moyano. She's a great trainer. I will give her credit when credit is due. She took Jilly and said, Jilly, you're a tiny dog. You're going to know how to do tiny dancer. And she got her to do it. So I have continued to um, practice it with her to encourage her to do it. And um, she is just such a sweetheart when she does it and everybody gets a kick out of it. It's a fun little trick you can teach your dogs. So you want to be careful if they have any type of hip issues. You don't want them necessarily up on their back hind legs for an extended period of time. So you want to be careful about that, especially with young puppies who are growing. You know, necessarily this is more of an advanced uh, training skill and trick. <laughs> she, she sees this treat in her hand. She, in my hand, she's very excited. So what I'm going to do is lure her up and then I'm going to turn like this. So again, come back over here. And first I'm going to have her sit. Yes. And then I'm going to lure it up. So she's going up. <laughs> And usually I give her the treat when she's still propped up, but we are on the hardwood. So she doesn't have good traction and I don't want her up for a very long time. So that's how you do it, is that we're going to lure the treat up, up, up. I bet she might even do it without a treat in my hand at this point. She might. She might. And she might not. So we practice our training oftentimes with the treats, with a high value treat, before we can add in any words or take the treats away. We want to... We want to set them up for success. Oh, oh you just, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Yes. So I'm just going to keep rewarding her like that because she's doing a good job. Sometimes we have to do what's called shaping, and that means that when she gets to a certain point and can't go any farther, we're going to reward her at that point, and then we're going to um, only reward her when she gets that far and um, work towards going a step further. So for example, so we're gonna get her to go, come over here, place, place. Yes. So for down, I'm gonna get her to go down. Oh. Yes. And I say yes right before I give her the treat as an indicator that she's done something good. So that's how we do down. That's how we do Tiny Dancer. Those were, um, that was tip four. The last thing I need to tell you guys about this, um, really, really important, my fifth tip about um, keeping our dogs happy and engaged and thrilled to be in a training class is that we want to end and start on a positive note. So we want to start with something they know really well. We want to end with something they know really well. If you or your dog is getting frustrated with training, stop what you're doing, end on something they know really well, and then take a break. 
Some dogs can train for a minute, some dogs can train for 30 minutes. It depends on their attention span, it depends on what you're learning, it depends on how you're introducing the information to them. So all dogs learn at different speeds, depends on the time of day, it depends on if there's other distractions, other things that are going on. So we wanna make sure that we set them up for success and us too. Let's give ourselves a break and let's give ourselves props for taking the time to train our dogs, to learn how to train our dogs, and to bond with our dogs in a more positive way. So before I end, I wanna just share with you a couple more things. One is that, as you know, I am a fear-free certified professional trainer. Everything that we train here is to reduce fear, anxiety, and stress in our animal companions, dogs, cats, gerbils, doesn't matter, we are here for every animal. I do a lot with dogs. I share with you guys tips every week on how to care for our animals in the most positive way we can do possible. So I wanted to remind you all of that. I hope you enjoyed this training today. And if you want more tips and tricks, check out my new dog walking guide called Strut Don't Stress. There will be a link in this um, video, wherever you're watching it, that you can click and grab this new guide. It gives you tips on how to stop the pulling, stop the chasing, and stop the barking when you are on walks so you can have stress-free walks with your dog anywhere around town, on the trails, it doesn't matter. And the last thing I wanna tell you guys is to stay tuned because there is way more to come. We have an amazing, wonderful masterclass coming up in a couple of weeks. I really hope you guys can join me. We are going to let you know all about it shortly. There's so much to tell you guys about it. Listen, we are calling this masterclass how to keep your dog's attention, because that's what I want to do. I want your dog to be all over you in a positive, healthy way when you are walking down the street. I want you to be the most exciting thing on the street so that your dog stops the, bark the barking, stops the pulling, stops the chasing, and keeps you and themselves and everyone else around them safe. So uh, pause up to you for taking the time out to learn all about dog training. I hope you got a lot out of it. Jilly loved learning with you guys today all about um, showing you off, showing off her tricks with Tiny Dancer and how to lay down on her place. So thank you guys so much. Have a great week and I will talk with you soon.